Hi, welcome to Journey with Jess. I am filming this intro video in my kitchen because it's been a hectic week. I'm studying for this cloud practitioner exam. And on top of that, I'm going to the West Coast today, visiting Sacramento, Portland, and LA in two weeks. So it's been very hectic to say the least. This episode was kind of done last minute. It's from my friend Daniela. I call her Campo, but we were teammates back in college. We played soccer together. You could tell she had ADHD, not for nothing. And she finally got diagnosed a few years ago. And so we're gonna be talking about her experience, how it felt to be on medication for the first time, and how she's dealing with it all. It'll be a little funny and very long. Danny could talk for a while. But I promise you're going to love the episode. So welcome to Journey with Jess. Thanks for listening. When did you first realize you had ADHD? When I was a kid, I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was me. Everyone else seemed to look like they know what they're doing or know what they're studying or can understand easier than I did. So I was like, okay, it must be somehow the language barrier somehow is coming. Mm. It's creeping in somehow. And I would just continuously say, okay. It's something that I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'm not concentrating hard enough or I'm not applying myself hard enough because that's what I was told. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, you know, I just got to do better. Like, I can't do better than better. Like, hello. I would just think it's me. Like, I would read, let's say, we're in school. I'll read a passage and then go to the questions. And then I have to read the same passage like five times in order to understand what I even read to then try and go answer the questions. It was even worse than during tests. So when I had a test in front of me, I don't know if you could say it was the anxiety of taking a test or everything accumulated and then me taking a test, you know, the, the feeling of, I guess, doubt plus I doubt. And now I'm taking a test with the all the doubt that I'm carrying per se. But I honestly just think it was the concentration aspect where I would read a, a question and then I would hear the ticking of the clock in the classroom mm-hmm. and I just look at the clock. And I'm like, all right, cool, clock, one, two, three, tick. And then I'm at the test. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm question one. It's like 30 minutes in. And I'm like, and then I would just have to not skim through it, but kind rush of go through, through it faster yeah. than rush through it faster than any, like, that you would want to in the test. You know, you want to do it calm and as you should. And so when I would read it, I just wouldn't get it. There would even be times where I like translated in my head. I'm like, okay, so it's not the language barrier. It's it's a hello, what's going on? And then when I was young, I told my mom, like nothing makes sense. I can't concentrate. I'm reading something. Somebody sneezes. I'm looking at them. It's a paper falls. I'm looking at the paper. It was that bad. And my mom was just like, you're just hyper. I'm like, okay, but hyper does not mean I can't pay attention to anything. Mm-hmm. Like hyper means, okay, you're annoying, you're hyper, sit still for a second, you have ants in your pants. It's not, everything is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And so I told her that, and we went to like, I guess a child psychiatrist, and, but we had recently just had a, a car accident, not a fender bender either, but just a, it was an accident, normal accident, okay. nobody got hurt, just cars were messed up. And so they said it could have been the shock from the accident. So time passed, I'm like, okay, this can't be the shock of the accident because hello, it's been a year. And I don't even remember the accident at that point. Like, what is an accident? So this is what he said, that it was a temporary ADHD. Mind you, I have my master's in (laughs) forensic psych and temporary ADHD does not exist. That there's no such thing as temporary ADHD. Either do or do not have it. That's so crazy. (laughs) And so I'm like, how can you? It's like saying temporary diabetes besides for pregnant women. It's like you have it or you don't have diabetes. You know what I mean? I know sometimes pregnant women can get it for a second or whatever, but like you do or you don't have it. Right. (laughs) That's it. And so I even asked my psychiatrist, I'm like, okay, is there such thing as a temporary ADHD? He was like, no. I'm like, okay, yeah. They super (laughs) lied. He doesn't know. Wait, okay. So I'm confused. So you, how old were you when all this was happening? 12, 13. All right. And then you said you went to a doctor and they didn't want to diagnose you with ADHD and your psychiatrist said there was no such thing as temporary ADHD. My mom took me to a child psychiatrist. Okay. Or a psychologist. One of those. I'm, I think it was a psychiatrist because he was trying to prescribe me something. Okay. And so he said that because of the accident XYZ months, weeks ago, I could have, or it's a possibility that I have temporary ADHD. And so obviously back then the ADHD aspect made sense because of everything that I was experiencing. But at that time, it was when ADHD was, I guess, blooming or like exploding everywhere or 
it was being more recognized. Not that all of a sudden everybody has it, it was just being more recognized. So obviously people were being diagnosed more. And so I was going to get prescribed medication. And of course, you're too young, you should have medication, you know, mm-hmm. you're too little, you're not even XYZ, you're not fully developed. Okay. I mean, okay. You so, had a psychiatrist on the side that you were seeing regularly? No, or was that after? So, my psychiatrist now, currently. Oh, you asked her currently. Oh, okay, I asked okay, my okay. current psychiatrist, okay, okay. and he was like, yes, the temporary aspect of ADHD doesn't exist. Oh, it's either okay, okay. you do or do not have it. Gotcha. Okay. And so I was like, okay, so <laughs> I knew what I was studying was not wrong. Like, hello. Yeah. yeah, so he told me that, and I was like, this kind of explains everything that I have felt when I was younger and it wasn't just when I was 12, 13, it was every time after that, even up until the time I got actually diagnosed when I finished my first master's. So 2021. You got first diagnosed in 2021. I thought you had it diagnosed when we met in 2015. (laughs) No, no, no. I could have told you that I had it for free. I could tell you that. Hey, I have (laughs) for free, but but it wasn't diagnosed. Oh, wow. Um, So For uh, to an extent, it was a relief to be diagnosed it because it made me feel, I guess, relieved in a sense, because it was not just like, okay, you suck. You can't concentrate. It was like, okay, so you were experiencing X, Y, Z because of this. And it's like everything was explained. Exactly. Everything was explained. So there was times I thought I was dumb. I, I genuinely thought I was dumb. I was like, okay, I just I can't understand anything. It's just me. Like. No entiendo, nada, nada me entra. So like, and so I, that's what I kept thinking. What's funny to me was because I already finished my master's and then I get diagnosed. Yeah. And I'm like, ya para que I already got my master's, you know, was the point. <laughs> like, I could diagnose myself. <laughs> yeah, like, hello. And so, I mean, it was validating per se. I was finally medicated. It took a while to get adjusted, of course, with medication because I was not medicated for 10 plus years. So getting to the right dosage and, and even the right medication that work took a while because, you know, that's so many years of not being treated. I had to figure things out myself mm. so I can try and grasp things, learn things and memorize things like that. So I had my own workarounds to things, right? I had to teach myself that because there's no other way. It's either that or I feel everything. You're talking about before medication. Before medication. Yeah. I mean, even so now, because... There's only so much medication I could take. And I'm not assuming, but I'm saying like after so many years being unmedicated to finally be medicated, it's good. Yes. But it's like, ya me pasé, like oh. estoy podrida at this point, really? like my body has gotten so used to the medication already. Oh, and it's okay. only been not even two years of being medicated. That's something I had to do at the beginning of this towards like February, March of this year was stop my current medication to switch to the old one just to go back to my current one so I could have a break so it could give me a, an effect because I can't go any higher in the dosages. What's your dosage right now? It's uh, 30 milligrams twice a day. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm telling you, Podrida, like that's it. They're like, bro, there's no more medication for you alive that exists. <laughs> oh, no, I heard the same thing with like depression and stuff, but I think they have so many different types of um, Oh yeah, whatever. Yeah. So they first gave me some medication. I don't remember, but it did nothing to me or, or it, Held my focus for let's say two hours at most. Ira murió, like declined heavily. It wouldn't just be like, okay, you ease out of, I guess, focus per se. Is just oh, like, like a crash, maybe. In a sense, a crash. Yes, it would be like a hundred percent focus to like twenty five to zero, and it wouldn't last any. It wouldn't last any length of time. Even at the highest dosage, I was taking it, and it didn't give me much effect as it should be. And I was like, I don't want to take a medication that doesn't do what it should do to the fullest, at least for me. Right. And that's when you switch to the generic Adderall. And that's what's been helping the most. But that's the one that I had to switch off of in February, March, because there was no more effects after a certain time. Mm. And this has been the medication that has helped me the most. I took a break from it for like three weeks and then got back to it. When I got back to it, it was great. It was like perfect. But then now it's back to, okay, you know, I'm still spacing off, not just spacing off, but like I'm still getting the dog from up, like the squirrel thing from time to time. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's not as bad as it used to be and or is not as bad as with the other medication. I mentioned I had to learn to like adapt with it when I was a child and even so in when I was getting my master's. 
but also had to adapt. I have to, I had to learn to adapt with this medication and kind of when the time it wore off or not a specific time, like, Oh, it's two o'clock, you know, it's going to time to get, drink some coffee because you're about to crash. You know, it wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. It was more of like, okay, so what can I do to put myself into focus as much as I can and not feel the crash? Like, I don't have a problem taking medication. I'm not against it. If I need it, I need it. If I don't, I know perfect, but I want to take it as I should, right? So Mm -hmm. if it's X, Y, Z, every time a day, two times a day, whatever, I'm going to do it. And if it lasts less than it should, then I have to find a workaround, which is what I have, I have been doing pretty much the same, like how I had to figure out how to get myself to focus. Mm -hmm. I have to do the same now, even though I'm medicated. How did it feel getting on medication? Because for me, when I got on medication for like depression and anxiety, I felt much more productive and I felt more like awake and stuff. Um, and also definitely very much emotionless. So, which was nice, um, but not in a bad way. How did it feel for you when you were first on ADHD? Like, how was the difference? Well, the first medication, it was still iffy, but I still noticed the difference. It wasn't a huge difference. I still noticed the difference in my focus, in my opinion, right? My friends or mom could tell you something different, but in my opinion, I felt the focus more. It was not only the focus aspect, but it was like, I focused and like, I guess because I was so, it wasn't like I was super focused, but because I had a focus that I didn't really before, I guess also give me like a push or a drive to do the best, finish work or finish things for work or for school, etc. So it was like two, two things that worked together for me. So like, it was like, I felt the focus kick in, but then like, because of that, I guess it motivated me to like, you know, kick ass pretty much like just go off and so that's what I feel when I'm like on the focus aspect of it I'm like I'm like locked in but it's not like you know I don't hear anything around me and it's nothing drastic like that but it's just Mm -hmm. like okay I can actually have a normal people focus and do things as I should I like that feeling because like I said it gives me like the push to get things done even more it's not like before I'm just like oh it sucks but like I feel more I guess alert per se Like I'm in action. It's just crazy what the mind can do, honestly. In action. I love it. So what were some tips and tricks that you had before you had medication in order to focus and get things done? So another thing about me, I'm a very visual person. So I need to have things visually. I don't necessarily mean like beautiful colors, but just means like if it's a book, I need to have it in front of me. I can't have an ebook or anything like that or Mm. or anything like that. I need to have it in front of me for me to need to focus or like that helps me it's hard for me to wander off because it's in my face you know what i mean mm. note it's always the screen but i don't know i just work better with physical stuff bye so when i do that for instance when it comes to studying and it's something i have to memorize it could be like things i have to define or just whatever whether it's with my major or whatever i use index cards and i write things down and then flip you know flip them the back for the definition or whatever needs to be learned and then I go through them. Sometimes what has also helped me are the the colorful the colorful index cards it grabs my attention. So I'm like, okay, cool, card. Next, keep keep reading. Like, and so also writing things down in a different index card, mm-hmm. right? Or even if I don't know, it's too many definitions. I'll type out definition, print it, and then still stick it on the index card. Um, but what worked best for me is writing it um, mm-hmm. because. I don't know, I just work best. Like I said, I'm, I'm a physical person. I have to do visually, I have to do it. And another thing that helped me would be highlighting. Like I know some people rent books and stuff, so it's difficult, but that's why I always make sure to buy my books because I have to like highlight part of the pages, you know, oh, wow. so you I can remember. Oh, you buy your textbooks? Yeah. Damn, you got money, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will sell them after. I will sell them after. What the heck? <laughs> the heck? I only kept the ones I needed because, you know, I still work as a therapist anyway. So, like, most of the things I learned, I still could go back to later. So, yeah, sometimes highlighting worked for me. Or even the um, the little, I guess, not posted, but the little stickies with the different colors on the top. So, you could, like, stick oh, on your paper. It's so kind of like, remember. um. I don't know what they're called. These things. Yes, those, those, yes. So, the let's say. Marks, I think. Yeah, like bookmarks, sticky things, whatever. So like, I will, let's say I'll put it on one of the part of the book that made sense. Or let's say read meant, you know, reread or whatever. I'll just stick it on there. Noted, there'll be time I'll highlight the whole page because I just felt like the whole page was <laughs> this so important. Way to learn. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> but it, it would just be things I had to do on my own to figure out. I mean, 
noted during high school was difficult because I already was like, okay, I just suck. I, I, you know, I, it's me, it's my brain, it's my concussions. I don't know. I, my brain is swollen. I don't know. But I saw so basically it was just like, you suck. That's it. Like, I kind of like not gave okay. up, like, okay, just failed. But it was like, okay, um, if you get B's and well, my mom will beat my ass, but uh, <laughs> like, it, it was like, obviously I had to get a B, but like, it was like B minus is all right. Obviously, I wouldn't want a B minus, but I was just like, well, whatever. That's what that's the best I'm going to do because <laughs> right. I can't concentrate. And also, you know, I paid more attention to at that time to sports and mm-hmm. bike riding, you know, riding my bike and my chorna shit, really. And plus, at that point, I was just like, I cannot focus and I can't concentrate. So like, when it came to down to like the SATs and stuff, I'm like, LOL, because there's no way like, I'm gonna get the 300 you get for your birth, but your name and that's it. Like, that's all I'm gonna get. Like, thank you for your time. Like, <laughs> so I was already I was already like, I'm obviously I wasn't just like, I'm gonna take it. And that's it. Of course, I tried to study, but right. But it's hard. Really, cause, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't now it wasn't only the 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 fact that it was a test, you know, determine where you go from college, etc, whatever. But it was also the okay, I know that I'm gonna start looking at the ticking clock or the mm-hmm. whatever people are gonna drop their pencils xyz. You only have whatever time, you know, not only was it the pressure, it was also the um, not really the environment, but the state mm-hmm. of mind I was at myself, because mm-hmm. I was already basically like, you're gonna have to pray for me because I don't know what's going on with this test. Like, is that why you decided to join the reserves? No, no. Okay. No, I, <laughs> there's too many reasons I did that. So one of the two reasons, the main reason was because I wanted to get my citizenship for free because in my <laughs> okay. eyes, in my, <laughs> in my eyes, I thought it was so expensive. I, thought, I was like, I'm not, I don't have $1,500 to pay it. And I'm going to probably fail the test anyway. So like, what's the point? Uh, another um, test, right? Um, no, but really, so I was like, what's the point? And so I was like, mm, free citizenship, free blue passport. Perfect. I'm going to just do my time and thank you for your service. And so that's was, that was one of the reasons, but also I was in, um, in ROTC, although it was in high school, although it was like Navy based, mm-hmm. still the aspect of, this is funny because I just spoke to my therapist about this. I guess the aspect of the structure of it. Oh, yeah. Was what helped me. Not because I like getting yelled at or whatever, but because of the fact <laughs> of like, you know, my concentration and my thinking is everywhere. This is something that is okay. You do this at XYZ time, whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. noted I was reserved. So it wasn't like I lived there or anything, but still the aspect of, you know, you still got to show up one time a month and still do, you know, things are at a certain set time. Since I was in um, ROTC, I always, when they used to come to our school, I was like, all oh, those people are so cool. Those guys are so cool. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, why am I a loser thinking they're so cool? I'm just going to do it. And then I just literally woke up, not even joking, on like a Tuesday. And I was like, well, I'm going to go uh, sign my life away. And I literally oh just gosh. went and signed my name and picked whatever job. And that's it. Did you not tell your parents or anything? I told them after, oh, by the way, May, I'm leaving and I'm going to go to the army. And thank you for your service. Yep. You told them I after? Was- I came after I signed. What am I going to do? Say sorry? Like say, I said Uno reverse to the to the to the recruiter. No, I was already Uno done reverse. <laughs> I was already done up. I was already. I already signed. I mean, that's another aspect of the ADHD that like annoyed me the most about it. Not only the concentration aspect was the the um, the impulsivity. I'm telling you, when I tell you, I woke up one day. I'm like, I'm going to join. I went to the recruiter and I signed my name and my best friend at the time came with me and we out we signed chow chow we out may we out chow like that's it literally it was a tuesday i think and i was like i'm about, I'm, I'm leaving i'm out no joke that's really <laughs> how i did things it was it was just like si me nace hoy i'm gonna do it si, oh. si me levanto y me da ganas hacerlo okay i'm gonna go do it and yes. that's how it was i feel like to an extent that was kind of fun <laughs> like not <laughs> yeah, fun yeah. but like you know it kept things interesting to an extent yeah. because I wasn't like miedosa, you know, I wasn't like, I don't know if I should, I wasn't like, I wasn't overthinking things. I would just do. That's how I did everything. And of course you don't, you know, you shouldn't just do things. You should think it through, but I like to just doing it part because thinking it through, sometimes you can talk yourself out of things. I just like to just do. So you like the impulsivity part of the ADHD? I didn't like it. Oh, you didn't. I didn't. But like at the same time, thinking about it, it's like not that bad. But like 
90% of it didn't like it. <laughs> You're like, it kept me, it kept things interesting, you know? It did, it did. But like, you know, at the same time, it's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what are some um, other things that people might not know about ADHD that are also l- correlated like with the impulsivity? Well, I mean, obviously everyone's different, of course, but for me, it was, what was heavy on it was the impulsivity aspect. Like I said, it could be, okay, we're doing this. Cool. Bye. It was never like they were thinking about anything. It was just like, okay, cool. We out. That's what was a little, I guess, difficult because, you know, after like, you're not, you're done being a kid. Like, all right, you can't just make decisions. You know what I mean? You have to like yeah. think about things. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, nothing bad came out of it, but still think this through my guy. Like, <laughs> but but like the impulsivity aspect, mine could be different from yours, you know, vice versa, whatever. But that was mostly what did it for me. The impulsivity aspect would be more of like decision making. For other people, it could be a different impulsivity than others. So it could be impulsive to eat different things, mm-hmm. millions of things, um, you know, good food, bad food, whatever. And it could be the same thing as I told you. It could be right now I crave Sour Patch Kids. I'm going to go stuff my face with a whole bag of Sour Patch Kids. Oh, the hyperfixation. Like you didn't mention that. There we go. Oh, that's true. That's true. So oh, yeah. you put, pull out a pen and paper because I got a list. <laughs> All right. Wait, <laughs> no, hold but- on. Let's, let's, can we list your hyperfixations? Okay. First one, Coca Cola. Okay. Pokemon. Okay. Now, but it's the a biggest sour one. Patch. Yes. But the biggest one is still Coca Cola. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, can you show your room? I have a tattoo, my guy. Can you show your room? <laughs> Let me see if I can show my room. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got things plugged in. Hold on. The amount of merch she has her coke oh why coca-cola why is that why i don't know impulsivity <laughs> hello <laughs> did we not did we not listen look at all that i think there's more before there was so much more before yeah that's a whole fridge wow look at that is there that like a opener the too in the fridge yeah yeah it has a bottle that's opener awesome. too that's so yep so we did coca-cola pokemon sour patch sour kid. patch dragon ball Dragon Ball. I want to throw in Ecuador there because you love well, Ecuador dog. to a different level, though. Because, like, you and your partner are from Ecuador, but you and your partner don't love Ecuador as much as you do. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah, so. That's true. I'm going to throw in Ecuador. Soccer, maybe? Is that a hyper fixation? Or no? Um, I wouldn't say hyper. No, I wouldn't say. I would no. just be like, you, just you like, know, like more than interest. More than interest. It's like, I guess. It's like a middle ground. I want. I don't want to be like passion because I'm <laughs> cheap. So like, I guess. How about coffee? Coffee? Mm-hmm. No. Nah. No. So, okay, so, so is it just five? Or is it no, 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 no. You're joking. Okay. All right. Fine. So okay. So okay. Dragon Ball definitely one of them. So like, it's funny because <laughs> Kim noticed that I like pick one thing and like made his gasto de eso and then next month is another thing you made it. so like i didn't notice that because hello it's me it's what i do <laughs> so, it's the pervert. Us so crazy when i was yeah and then i the desgasta y de ahí murió and then something else yeah but recently the the, the most would be everything I just named oh mustangs for sure oh wow yeah yeah yes Yes, I forgot about I have that. a collection. I have a collection of that too. You didn't um, ha- have a Mustang. What What was the car you had? I had, I had a it Mustang. It was a Mustang. Okay, okay. That she wrecked. Um, really, guys. All right, relax. The city of New York wrecked, not me. Thank you. You're right. Correction. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Correction. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> objection. Hello. <laughs> so Mustangs. <Anyways>. Um, <laughs> um, come on. That's, mm. We're at six. We're at six. Oh, I gotta see my tattoos just in case. Um. You got a feather there. You, you I guess. Words? First of all, it's a quill. Next. Oh, Let's get educated. Second, Damn. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Missed two um, masters over here. First of all, I have one and a quarter because I still got more semesters of my second one. So I got <laughs> one. I still in, in the entrada of the second in one. progress. That's it. Um, yes, exactly. Two, <laughs> pending as hell. Um, que mas? Call of Duty, 100%. Like, oh, sorry, Duty. die. Like, like. Put it on my forehead, like that's it. That's um, yeah. What else? Give us. You're wearing a Dragon Ball. That's funny season, because then so. I am. It was actually Dragon Ball Super, but you know, same thing. Sorry. Um. Oh, <laughs> look, look at look at look at my blanket too. Well, it's hot as hell, so I'm not using it, obviously. But oh, that's pretty dope. It's, it's upside down, but it's cool. It looks it's, it's, it looks it's, 
It's me, Goku. Wait, hold on. Before we go back to the fixation, whatever the hell. Okay. Um, so I, I had like a little trading card of Dragon Ball and it's Goku. You know, he's younger. And you know how like people put like, they're like Santa Maria, whatever the fuck, in their car. The sun blocked the rear, thing. The rear view mirror? No, 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 la que se baja. La que se baja para que te puedas oh. ver el espejo. Yeah. Yes. The sun visor? That thing. That sun visor. visor. Yeah, good, good. Yes, yes very good. You know how people put like the Santa Maria Santissima on the visor? So I put yeah. the Goku one right there on my visor in my car. <laughs> I am dead. You're like, oh. hey, in Goku, we trust. <laughs> yes. Me <laughs> Santissimo. Your mom would love that. My mom will punch me in the face. Let her find out. What else? I don't, I feel like I'm shorting myself on this. You probably There's are. A lot, oh, watches, watches, watches. I was going to ask you because you're wearing a nice one, but I, you never used to wear them in college. I used to always wear them, yes. Yeah, you used to always dress up in suits, no? Yeah. Not even business casual, business, every day yeah. in college after soccer. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so true. crazy. That was you. Yeah, that's true. I, I have oh, actually, yeah, I love suits. I love yeah, suits. Yeah, with the heels and Funny story bro. about that. Funny story about that. Um, in, I guess, senior year of my high school, they decided to put uniforms for everybody. And I looked like a dweeb, like a dweeb, dweeb, dweeb in a polo, like super loser boy. And so I was like, okay, is there something else I can wear? Because I look mega like a loser in a polo. And they were like, yeah, you can wear business casual. You know, the store named Mandy. Oh, yeah. The the clothing sh shop for women. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I used to work there and they used to have, you know, blazers and dress pants. So I was like, Okay, if I'm gonna be a loser, I'm gonna be a, a, a suited loser. So then I started wearing like that ass. I started wearing suits to school. That's where it started. And <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna be caught in a polo because I look crazy. I just look like a loser. Like, oh my god, I was like two foot, two feet tall. Imagine me in a big ass polo. No, 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 no. I was like, if I'm gonna look like a loser, I'm gonna look like a suited loser. And so oh I would just obviously I wear flats. I wasn't gonna wear no high heels. First okay. of all, I would look like Bambi in high heels anyways. Like, what are you talking about? But you mastered so, it, though. You ended up mastering it. I guess, yeah. yeah. That's because I have demon calves, that's all. But, um, <laughs> um, oh but yeah, God. so that's where, that's where it started. And, yeah, so I have, I have no joke. I guess you could say blazers and suits are a fixation because I have, 100%. like, a tub. Yeah, yeah. I completely forgot about that. And I would just be like, where is she going, bro? Is she going to class at 8 in the morning Loser, like loser, loser, loser. Yes, <laughs> literally, literally, yes. But you loved and it, so, which was the only thing that matters. So yeah, another one would be watches, and then I thought of another one, and I just lost it. Watches and Great. suits. That's we're at eight. There's another one I just thought of. You said my friend. Oh, oh, sneakers, sneakers. So I, I was always <laughs> super plain Jane. So I'll wear whatever color shirt. It could be purple, yellow, amarillo, azul, rojo, whatever, and I'm wearing black tons that's it i mean back back in the day was converses but i had big ass feet for a little girl that as my friend used, um used to call me big ass chucks because they were big as hell and i was like this little i stopped wearing i was like damn that's true and then now since i kind of maybe grew into my feet i think i i got them again but i like fixation that just happened like three four months ago was sneakers so i was like okay uh -huh. i'm gonna try and spice up my style because i'm mega plain jane and will be like Black Tom's forever and or black his zapatos deportivo and that's it. I mean, which is nothing wrong. It's super. It's yeah. easier for me. I just throw on the sneakers. Bye. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like, let me, you know, try something different. See if me gusta me, whatever. You know, like if maybe I feel better or whatever. And so, so now you're a sneakerhead. No, 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 no worry. <laughs> <you're out> <laughs> <laughs> white sneakers brown sneakers like oh so where's the fixation um, you said sneakers. Okay, okay 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 you know the sneaker um stan smith from their adidas their adidas is some okay. guy that makes adidas my fixation was that so i have a corella deville one i have oh. a monsters inc one a pokemon one so the, another thing is like they're usually expensive like over a hundred dollars but i don't buy them over a hundred dollars oh, i wait to mega clearance and mega final sale and so, like, instead of buying them for 120 I got them for, like, 40 bucks. And oh, so... Oh, wow. Yeah. How do you find and those? I'm telling you, you gotta let me... If you need something, you gotta tell me, and I'll send you the descuentos all the time. I am... That's crazy. Queen. All those Stan Smiths are expensive. I got them, like, no joke, no more than $50. Oh, 
That's nuts. That's really crazy. That's like a, a really yeah. great skill to have in life. I had to learn the hard way because I went broke and decided I didn't like that. But <laughs> I didn't like that. Not for me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was not like the lifestyle I wanted. <laughs> Miss Bougie over here. Bougie hell. I have dark ass coffee. Isn't that like a water filter in the back? You know, automated water filter in the back. God damn. First of all, we got that. <laughs> Off of Facebook Market, so not brand new. There's going to always, <laughs> always. So, I yeah, heard your dog is expensive. I heard that. And that cheap yeah, dog have. honestly, honestly, I spoil her. I've never had a small dog, so I didn't know how I could like play with I had dog. a big dog. Yeah, yeah, I had a big dog. I had a big <laughs> retriever, so like I would manhandle, you know, like yeah, yeah. Me con él and just throw him, and you know, yeah. we'd just fly together and stuff. But with her, if I if I manhandle her, she'll break her back and se termina su So like, but she's crazy though. She's crazy. So like, I thought oh, yeah. I was like, damn, how am I gonna play with? She's so little. Yeah, right. She'll she'll kill me. She'll kill me right now. Oh, what? Like, really? she does not play. When she wants to play, she'll go to the bed and bark. Although we could be here in the kitchen, whatever, she'll go to the bed and bark. And that means oh. come here and play now. And so we go there and then she starts like not attacking us, obviously, but playing. Yeah, yeah. And like she only it's funny because she only does it when we're wearing sleeves. If oh, we don't she's have so on, smart. Oh, we won't do it for real. Like, like we tried it one time and like I would have no I would have short sleeves shirt on. I would try to do it and she wouldn't really do it. But then like Kim will go with like her sweater on and then murder, like attack. Like, yeah, <laughs> murder. So, yeah, it's it's funny. But yeah, she, oh. she's expensive as hell. Like she that's has health insurance and I don't, so let's talk about it. Well, you gotta you gotta pass that over later because we're trying to get health insurance for Loki. So yeah, no, it's it honestly vale la pena for real because I bet you know they're not for nothing. Although they're perfect and cute, but they're dumb as hell sometimes. So like, and they're expensive, bro. If you don't have yeah. health insurance for that, jeez. Mm-hmm. Seriously, and like no joke, like the first three weeks we had um, Evie in the hospital. For one thing or another, I'm like, bro. First three weeks, really? Yeah, yeah. It was different things. Like, I mean, even till now, if si no le da la gana, she won't eat. Just oh. because she wants, like, go, like real food, like uh, human food. And so we'll be like, well, you're starving. And then she'll literally won't eat. And oh, we're like, no. okay, we're not going to starve. This is, this is bad. <laughs> ASPCA is going to come. Like, that's is coming. Like, you got to eat. You know, then we end up, like, giving in, like, Okay, I guess we're just gonna put chicken on your food. I heard but, they live longer with like human food. I don't know. I've heard mixed, mixed, oh, yeah. um, mixed things regarding that. Sometimes they're like, "Oh, if you give them too much human food, they're gonna die faster because of the mm. processed food." Blah blah blah. blah. Okay. Which I mean, it kind of makes sense because yeah. everything now is processed as hell. So like, yeah. I mean, also so, anything made in America is like super, super not good. Bro, why is the chicken the size of me? Like, bro, the chicken should not be the size of me. Like, this is GMO as hell. Oh, honestly, yes. Because I, I literally, I went to El Salvador the other day. I'm like, these are some small ass chickens, bro. <laughs> but the Wait, did you here. just say, time out, time out. Did you just say I went to El Salvador the other day? And yeah. you call me bougie? You, I was just in another country two days ago. You know, like, that's Girl, you don't act like you don't be going to Ecuador. Okay, first of all, because I don't have insurance and I do there. So I needed to, to have it <laughs> fix myself. And so it was a dire need. <laughs> Listen, we, we have credit card points. That's the only reason I went. Honestly, same. Yeah, I, same. I'm also a little broke over here. Points saved my life. Honestly, same. True, true. That is but true. But back to the ADHD stuff, because I think we've we've veered off the conversation just a little bit. <laughs> that is me every day. Do you feel like ADHD like was kind of like negative to your day-to-day besides like the taking the test off like in school? Did it ever have a negative effect on anything else in your life? I mean, not that I can think of, honestly, besides, like you said, the test aspect or the studying or learning. I mean, I guess you could also say, I guess, in the classroom, it's not that I wouldn't pay attention. I would. But then once again, somebody sneezes, the, the clock ticks, you know, something happens. I'm like, oh, cool. OK, with that, you know, so I would have to, like, tell myself, all right, bro, shut up, pay attention to the teacher and focus try and i just be like i can't focus and then it would just be never ending like that would you honestly considered like class clown and stuff like i was actually i was that's funny like i won class clown for my um oh. my class yeah <laughs> i am that's dead. what i was gonna actually say i was gonna actually say i think it makes things 
makes me funny. She said me, I'm a special case. I, I don't know where the trophy's at, but it's somewhere. Oh, you actually got a trophy? That's so funny. Yeah, I told you I was pinned. Oh. I was crowned. You were crowned. I think I Weren't you also like soon. prom queen as as well? No, not queen. Runner up, excuse me. Oh, my God. Runner excuse up. Me. Not queen, not queen. Not Yo, queen. this Runner girl up. has two. like so many lives, bro. Army reserves. What you mean? <laughs> Freaking class clown. Almost prom queen. Excuse me. Not prom queen. It's the homecoming. Sorry, homecoming, homecoming. Oh, oh, oh. Same difference. I also relate to the same thing. It's kind of like, um, has this affected any of your friendships, relationships, or like family? For example, I know this um, one girl who's always apologizing because she always interrupts conversations. Because for ADHD, like, it's like, she can't really control it. I, like, she doesn't have medication for it. So it's like really hard for her to like, not to interrupt and stuff. So my best friend at the time... She also ended up having ADHD, so like, I guess that oh. didn't matter because we both just <laughs> interrupting as hell. I guess. How did and that so, work? Like, I guess just was, talk, then no one listened. Just figure it out. Just, just speak and just make it work. And for my friends that I've had for a long time or short period amount of time, whatever, it never became an issue. Although I know for a fact, I well, I did like constantly have an issue interrupting because if I don't tell you what's going on in my head right now, I'm going to forget and then I'm going to die. And so it's like, if I don't tell you right now, murió. like whatever I was going to tell you that thought, murió. like that's it. <laughs> and like, obviously you don't want to be interrupted. Like, like I'm a grown ass woman. I'm like, hey, bye, bye, bye. like that's annoying. But it was something that was super hard to do. And that I, I, I didn't really notice in the, until Kim pointed it out, but I'm like, no lago de malas. It's just like, if I genuinely do not tell you the second, it's gone forever. And there's no going back to whatever I just thought. And then I'm going yeah. to think about what I just thought. And I don't know what I did. So it's just like, I end up disgusting me because like, I start thinking like, what was it? What was it I was thinking? What was that I was thinking? And then I'm just like, forever, because obviously, sometimes your thoughts don't come back. What the heck? Like, that was a big issue up until like, I will say, I don't know, last year or something, or maybe even now, I don't really know. I don't think so. I, I feel like I... And better in that aspect. Is it difficult still? Yeah. You know how some people have anxiety, like if they don't do something, like if they feel like dire need of doing it and they don't do it, they feel like angustia, they're going to explode. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel if I don't let go and tell you it and it's gone. You know, I mentioned you should write whatever down, how I, you know, it, para que no se te vaya. That's what I used to try and do, write it down, whether it's on my phone or on an actual notebook. So when it came, down to having a conversation or um when the conversation was over with that person you know I could be like, oh by the way when you mentioned this at 12 32 it would be like okay i have your response here i have it it didn't go away because here it is besides the attention aspect was probably one of the hardest things but friendship wise that never was an issue with that um but at the same time because I don't have much family here or really any family here. My friends were like my family. I'm interrupting you. You tell me like, yo, shut up for a second. I'm like, okay. And you know, like we check each other basically. And we have that closeness and noted it wasn't like that at first, obviously, because you know, you build a relationship, whatever. But sometimes when you feel comfortable with certain friends or people or whatever, especially because I've known them for so many years, sometimes you can be a friend, someone with like for a year and they're like super like, you know, you have a connection per se, or, you know, yeah, you guys understand one another. For, like I said, for me, it becomes like a family thing more than a, a friendship. Oh, like my friend Fulana, no, it's just like, you know, that's basically family, you know, because I don't have cousins yeah. or whatever here, kind of, but not really. I don't have cousins here. So it's like yeah. the friends I, I made throughout time, like I would say like 80% of them are close to me. Do I talk to them every day? No, because you have my, your life, I have my life, you know, La Vecina has her life, you know, but the closeness is still there. Stay tuned for part two.